this is share like I'm quite well known on a lot of the motorcycle forums the aim is modifying and repairing uh, various motorcycles clutch baskets I've recently been approached by four owners independently who run Yamaha XT 1200 Super Tonnaires and they've all reported having a similar kind of vibration to the ones I investigated and cured in Suzuki's uh, three and a half, four years ago and uh, here's my attempt to show you what the problem is just to explain how the clutch baskets work this is a clutch basket from a motorcycle um, the crankshaft drives the outer gear here and inside we have a set of six springs usually that's the springs in there and we get typically uh, three or four phases of spring this one has three phases we've got phase one here which is quite a weak spring I can even turn against it by hand then we get uh, phase two springs which is this pair of springs here and then we get phase three springs three of those as well um, you can see the gap in the uh, gear at either end of the spring this is a phase three spring that doesn't come into play until the damper is heavily deflected in one direction um, this is the driving direction you can see that I can't even get anywhere near the, three, the third phase second phase you can just see a gap there and uh, of course the phase one is actually a very snug fit in the gear um, so by a combination of different spring wire thicknesses different numbers of springs and the gaps at the ends of each spring in the gear or in the seats that the springs sit in in the plates um, we get different phasing and different levels of damping just remove the phase two springs in this one and you can see then that if I was managing to compress the phase twos I would eventually reach the phase threes as well uh -huh. and then when the phase threes are completely overloaded um, there are some stops which fit in here held by uh, rivets which I've removed which also held the top plate onto these holes as well so that's the uh, way that the clutch basket and the damper works the clutch plates are mounted in these fingers underneath you'll be familiar with that part but this part in the damper is often hidden and uh, many mechanics don't even know it's there so the problem um, that I'm finding is uh, it's closely related to what was wrong in the Suzuki uh, SV thousands and DL thousands which I say I've, I've repaired well, modified uh, hundreds of those to date um, but the big problem is this is only a low torque um, engine basket and you can see that the springs have started to eat into the aluminium uh, this basket's only done 5,000 miles um, so you can see there's a problem the manufacturers leave them like this and the bike will probably do 50,000 miles and you'd never know that there was a problem uh, when it comes to the larger capacity engines, uh, particularly um, large singles, uh, V-twins, 1000cc V-twins that give their clutches a hard time. This damp has to be much stronger um, and this is the one from the Suzuki SV-1000 um, and DL-1000 V-Strom. So what they did to overcome the problem of the uh, springs eating into the uh, aluminium, they're still eating in this one that's done a fair, a fair mileage, um, they introduced another plate inside so as well as the plate that goes on top they duplicated that effectively and placed it inside but they never put the plate in firm so the plate itself rattles about like that so as the springs press against it um, it takes up one position as another spring comes into play it takes up another position and another position and as the torque absorber moves backwards and forwards the plate rattles backwards and forwards now that's quite a substantial piece of metal and that rattles backwards and forwards and causes the horrible vibration at uh, somewhere from 2800 to 3800 in the Suzuki 1000 V twin engine uh, you can see how polished it is on the back there where it's done nothing but spend its life rubbing backwards and forwards on this rim round here um, so that, that's quite substantial and that's, that's the problem um, because the basket suffers with that extra vibration at certain periods of its life um, of course we only feel it at 2.8 to 3.2 or three, sorry 2.8 to 3.8 but of course uh, it's going off all the time that vibration and what happens is it wears the bearing in the middle of here uh, prematurely quite a poor bearing just a piece of um, well not machined aluminium uh, it is as it was cast running on the hub of the gear there so this is this is how they go to fit together here yeah? the gear doesn't actually turn much but it just has to be able to give 
well, that's probably a better representation. Just has to be able to give that few degrees to absorb the, the peak torque loads. So the problem, um, obviously Yamaha must have known about this and they changed the design significantly for the Yamaha Super Tonnerre XT1200 and what they've introduced is for the springs uh, on the back of the basket they've introduced some um, pieces that I can only describe as uh, thin bits of tin um, to act as um, liners for the aluminium pockets um, so that we don't uh, have the problem with the springs um, eating away into the alloy on the high torque engine um, that's all well and good but the the pieces do move a bit now um, this is this basket from a Yamaha has only done uh, 1500 miles it was only bought uh, six months ago from a Yamaha dealership uh, and it's only done 1500 miles in a bike so um, I'm fairly confident that they'll all be suffering from some kind of problem like this and I'll demonstrate what's going off um, the spring is pushed this way by the webs of the gear but unfortunately when it does this it's also lifting the plate up high so you can see it's lifting up there so this is centrifugal force forcing the middle bit of metal outwards the spring of course is going to be pushing against the outside edge of this metal and it's lifting up and the reason it's lifting up is well it's got a, a slant to it there and then of course these slopes here and then even worse as well uh, you see the v-shape here fits onto that v-shape there so if i've got a v-shape on a v-shape and i push that way it's going to lift up and that's what's happening as you ride your bike along um, it's worse as well because the first phase of spring pushes the uh, plate along that way and lifts it and then the second phase of spring comes along and when that one gets the gear pushing on it it pushes it back down again so we've got this jumping up and down motion of the uh, of the three segments that's very close to what was going off in the Suzuki but of course in that one we had all the segments fastened together in one continuous plate so in the Yamaha um, it's like a piece of metal moving about but we've got all three pieces of metal uh, having a mind of their own and jumping up and down according to the loading of each spring and the position um, I'll demonstrate further what's been actually going, what's been going off. Um, you can see where the heel of these three segments rubs on the hub centre there, and also you can see where the polishing's taking place, where the back of the segments, where the back of the segments has been sliding up the ramps there. Also, as well, you can see that there is a little mark here. Remember, I was talking about. I showed how the how the piece lifted up and then the front went down when the next phase came in this mark here is where the leading edge of the plate has gone back down and started to dig in and we can see the shape here where just these corners have actually made a mark in the hub uh, that's because the whole item has been lifted up and these corners alone have been touching the alloy and everything else has been clear um, Yamaha have improved the bore in the middle of the basket there, you can see there's a good machined surface and also if you look at Yamaha's gear that goes in the middle, the equivalent of this, it's had its own lubrication system built in and all sorts of uh, clever things to overcome. Um, I have modified a few of these already for owners um, and they're out on trial and so far results are good. Um, Thanks very much for listening and I hope it was clear.